There's that golden apple I was talking about. Yes, we're back in Soleil Town, and I, I needed to stop by to get some extra to heal up my hearts for the upcoming dungeon and boss fight. I decided to come over here and figure out where that golden apple I saw in the past was, and that's where it was. But to get to it, you have to go all the way over here, where if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see very barely that one of these posts is not actually part of the fence. Whew. Probably should have noticed it earlier, but I was still pissed off about that stump I had to chase around for the apple, you know? But that's over. Now, jump up here and bam, golden apple. Excellent. Okay, now we can head back to the deserts to figure out what's going on with the tornado. Well, we know what's going on with the tornado. It's taking us back in time. In fact, it seems to be taking us back to specific moments. Well, it, it is. We've only been to the one place, but I'll be back in a minute. And we're back in the desert. Okay. First thing we're going to do is hop inside, and everything is slightly orange. Or, I suppose this is the Sega Genesis attempt at sepia tones. Because everybody knows the past was in sepia. I guess. Okay, uh, also the oasis path is gone. Nothing here. Still, it's the past. That's not entirely unusual. You can explore all those area again. Just nothing here. And oddly enough, if you missed treasures, they're not here either. Again, that's old memory I'm going on there, but uh, well, what is here, however, is this town, or more specifically, this palace and one of the houses. And this house is right here. Okay, we have some people inside who are warning us about going inside the palace. And one guy who escaped from the palace, Camellia Palace. I like how the fact that the door's open, but you can still see the boards from where it was closed. Nice job. Good sprite work there. Into the palace. Okay, first thing we see is a treasure chest we can't reach. A door we can't open. Two, if you count the one block of the treasure chest. And a large room that seems to be hosting some sort of court. Apparently they're accusing this girl of being a monster because she was in the room that was closed. Yeah, they have very shaky descriptions of what makes a monster in this play, so... Something we're going to have to keep an eye on, too. Oh no, she opened a door that was locked. Only monsters could possibly do that. Oh, and if you return from the sixth floor, you also could, uh, couldn't could possibly be a uh, human. You have to have been a monster. Which is weird, because we haven't really run into any monsters that look like people. We've run into the raccoon. He looks kind of... He could turn into a person, but he's a raccoon, not a monster. Yeah, they're throwing the people away. Anyone accused of being a monster? Throw it to the dungeon and probably executed rather than left to languish. She's tired of it, and he can't stand it. So as you can guess, the government around here is a bit depressive at the moment. For fear of monsters, or perhaps using monsters as a scapegoat. So much so that when monsters started appearing in here, they just sealed off the floors. With people still inside, too. Nice folks. Yeah, kind of a witch hunt thing going on where someone gets accused, they point the finger at someone else. Okay, it's here we find that the armadillo has a secondary use. If you deploy it and then throw it, he can hit switches for you. Like that. Okay. I think, yeah, we're technically on the third floor now. Oh, excuse me. Hmm. We're not playing uh, Bloodborne. Been waiting to play that for a while. Not a big fan of Dark Souls, but um, 
Definitely dig the uh, Lovecraft inspired stuff. Mind you, it took me like a day to beat the first boss. So, eh, not exactly great at it. Okay. Go all the way to the top here and he wants you to look where there's no shadow and to save his girl. Presumably his daughter. Fair enough. If you look at the wall, you'll see the shadow is missing from this spot right here. Now you want to do this quick because these are those tiles that seem to break like really quickly. There are actually two paths, but this is the only one that actually leads somewhere. Let's get a good running jump and bam. Okay. You'll also notice that the monsters in this area are basically just hieroglyphics that pop out. And that is all of the monsters, not counting the boss. Okay, but we do want to keep an eye out. Well, I'll fight one of these guys so you can see it. There. See? Drop some money. Okay. Oh, speaking of money. We're getting close. 800 is just tantalizingly close. Okay. Continuing upwards. And, uh... Yeah, I should have used the armadillo to make the path there. Fortunately, you can do it uh, up ahead, too. Which I didn't think about, because it's a pit. You wouldn't think throwing an armadillo into a pit would work, but eh, there you go. Number one, still is doing this really trickily, having to... Because uh, when you push a button, he turns into the plank. I was doing it in such a way where I would jump, move, and turn him to the plate to land on him again. I wouldn't advise it. It takes forever, and this is, it just isn't worth the trouble. There's nothing really hidden that far away to make it worth it. Okay. Oh, and we're top of the sixth floor. Oh, and she's going. Okay, not really much we can do here. We'll just uh, go all the way back down. And bam! We're in the room with the Awakening Powder. Okay. Yeah, let's get our standard equipment on. Uh, the strongest ice magic works on this guy, but I kind of like the speed of the uh, Leviathan Assisted Sword. I seem to recall a very similar boss in Kirby Superstar. A uh, lizard thing. Oh, sorry, I keep yelling. Uh, I need to get some sleep, I suppose. Someday. Okay. He goes down pretty quick, though, especially if you have the Holy Sword since it hits him for a few heart, uh, apples each time. The only trick is to make sure you don't get caught by his tongue. Because much like the Kirby boss, he'll basically eat you and spit you across the room. Okay. Yep, pretty simple boss. Nothing in this game, none of the bosses have been particularly, what I'd call, hard. It's a bit more tricky. Georama, you... I don't know, I think you could have figured it, you figured it out on your own as a kid. I did it as a kid. Let's see, he's almost dead. One more hit should do it. And good. Humans have forgotten all the trust and thinking only of themselves. And killing the monster doesn't exactly fix people being people. Fortunately, we get another animal. This one was the Moa, a legendary bird. Now, Moa is an interesting animal companion because uh, Moa's whole function is to strengthen other monsters. For example, if we pair her up with the cheetah, we can go three times as fast, which is fast enough to smash in the walls. Uh, let's see, going for the Leviathan next, you swing your sword three times faster. Uh, I, Lion or Penguin, of course, gives you the second strongest fire and ice spell. Oddly enough, the dinosaur does nothing. To strengthen the dinosaur, you need to equip it with the uh, cheetah. But, if you equip it on the butterfly or the squirrel, it will continue to either let you control it or rebound infinitely. 
which could be useful. Uh, no effect on the raccoon or the armadillo. Even though the dog claims it makes it grip stronger, again, how often have I been using the dog? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, the if you mix the squirrel with the butterfly, the ability to control with the ability to rebound, it does this. It has no real function, but eh, it's in there. <laughs> okay. Now, the Mobird wants us to talk to everybody to see if it, we couldn't convince people to quit being dicks to each other. A noble effort. So, yeah, see, you go so fast, you're smashing into walls. Okay. Let's go try talking to people and see if we can change any minds. Let's go all the way to the end and just work our way back. Uh, doesn't really explain what everyone knows what he's talking about by that. Uh, monsters came out of the floor. What's wrong with that? What? <laughs> You know, who's played Ultima, was it? yeah, Ultima 3, those monsters coming, monsters in the floor are nothing to laugh at. Neither is grass. As in patches of grass that murder you. Oh, that was a weird game. But, no one's listening to us. What a surprise. Everyone's afraid. Now, you notice I took a weird way to start talking to everybody, and that's because normally, when you go to this area, what you're going to want to do is run straight to the courtroom. In which case, you get tripped by this guy here, which I think is the judge. Now, since you're a foreigner, he just throws you straight in jail. Social commentary. Nah. Let's see. And this is the girl we rescued, but because she returned from the sixth floor, she must be a monster and is therefore a duck. And thrown into this dungeon. And now she's dead. So, well done. Now, this is another spot where they don't come out and point uh, They don't point out what you need to do. But what you need to do is to hit the walls until you find this spot. From here, you can escape. Same way as the guy who escaped from before. You notice there was a door in the back of the room that was blocked earlier. Yep. Mentions his friend's already left to do something. And his friend's right there. Life to the east. Alright, sounds like he's talking about the oasis, which is weird because it's not really a human settlement, is it? I like to think this guy just kind of went on and either founded a... Um, Oh, uh, what was it? Iris? Yeah, Iris. Oh, the taper somehow knows that we just saw a bad dream. Well, bad or no, that finishes this part, so let's go ahead and head out of here. Okay, well, that covers it for this time. Let's go see where the tornado is so we know we'll be hitting next time. Ah, looks like it's in Lily, a uh, burn daisy. We'll pick up there next time.